Okay, um, so this next item is um, a Lefton planter. And she's got a blue floral pattern on the front and the back. And she's got a really pretty, really pretty face. Nice design to her. She does have a little bit of damage. She has um, just a really small chip here on the bow. And then um, a little one right here on the back. And then of course these three flowers in the front, they do have a little bit of chipping on um, the tips of the petals. And, um, but overall it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look bad. It has a pretty decent um, cohesive look to it still. There's these other 3D flowers that kind of pop out and those are all in really good shape. But um, she is Mark Lefton and um, Japan with a 3138 number on her. So she's really pretty and I do already have her listed in the shop and I think I've got her starting out at $30. And then um, another item that I got from the antique shop was um, this little glass, blown glass elephant. He's clear um, and he has blue, blue eyes and a really long trunk that's up. And um, he's really cute. I haven't seen one like this. Um, I do collect elephants, um, but he does. Um, he does sit up and I just thought that was really neat. He probably is meant to be a ring holder, but I think that would maybe make him a little top heavy. So, and I guess you can um, put him in this position too, but then he does kind of um, tip over a little bit. So I think he's really meant to sit up like this, but um, I do collect elephants. So this little guy, I think I paid $3 for him and um, he'll go in my own personal collection. I just think he's really cute and unique one that I haven't seen before. And um, the left end planner, I believe I paid $12 for her. All right. And then this guy, I also got him or her <laughs> from um, the antique store. And she was just really cute and kitschy and um, I just love the colors. It's, um, like a teal green turquoise color with this purple. And the fur is really soft. And I saw a pink one listed and it stated that this is real fur, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that's correct. But, um, it has a pink and white ribbon, which is also original to the piece. Um, he's in good condition. He doesn't have, um, any chips, cracks, or repairs. The only thing is there's some gloppy glue on the back here. So I will try to clean that up a little bit. Um, but all the legs are in really good condition and he does have a Japan mark on the bottom. Um... So the pink one that I saw listed was, I believe it was in the $40 range. So that's where I started this guy. He is listed on my eBay shop already. 
um, but I'll slowly bring um, the price down if he doesn't sell pretty quickly. And there's a little bit of um, paint wear to the nose, but the eyes um, are in really good condition. I don't really see any issues with the eyes. He's cute. He's fun. Really colorful. Just kind of makes me smile every time I see him. And let me tell you, it has been one of those weeks. Lots of ups and downs this week. Like this, this part of the video I'm having to re, um, reshoot because I think the other part of it went corrupt and then I was trying to um, import it into my laptop and I lost it somehow. I don't know if I deleted it or what happened, but um, having to reshoot half of this video, which is fine. <laughs> I just don't know if I got all the items back together again. Um, Okay, and then I'm going to move on to um, some other items that I got from the estate sale. Um, a lot of the jewelry I got from the estate sale, and then I did get some hard good items. And um, a lot of, or not a lot, but a few paper ephemera items. Um, so this guy, he's a little bulldog, and I think he had... Um, a six dollar sticker on him but I paid three dollars because it was half off day and I think this was Takahashi little trinket box he's in good condition he has a lot of that um you know fake crazing but I think he's cute and um no other chips or cracks he's in He's in really good condition. Really cute. I'm thinking probably from the 80s. Maybe a little recent, more recent than that, 80s to 90s. Um, but it does say made in Japan on the bottom. And then it does say San Francisco. But I think that's where they, they import a lot of these. Um, but they're made in Japan. And um, he's on eBay already because um, after I filmed the video the first time, I went through and I shot pictures of everything. So I believe I have him starting out at 20 but again, I just start to drop prices down um, as the item sits um, on eBay and doesn't sell. So he's really cute. And bulldogs are hot and fun right now. Ears are all in good condition, no chips or cracks. And then um, this, this is a string of beads, like little rubber ducky beads with these little white, um, maybe milk glass, white glass beads. Um, but I paid two dollars because this was marked as four. And I paid half, but um, I think, I don't know, it was just a week or even a few days after I went to this estate sale and picked these up and I went to Hobby Lobby and I saw that they sell um, these strings of beads. So these are modern contemporary items, but I just thought they were really cute because they have, You know, the applied eyes and the beak, and I'm assuming that all has to be done separately. And it's these are all glass, so I didn't mind paying two dollars for a string of these. And um, they're marked $6.99, so um, I'm starting to get into journaling, and I was thinking that maybe this might be cute to use or part of it to use as a pull or a tassel um, charm type item on a journal. So I probably won't sell these on eBay because they're probably not worth that much. Um, and there's probably other ones out there. 
but I still wanted to share it because um, it was an item that I did pick up. And then I do have a couple pieces of ephemera, and this is Al Algeria, Algeria Patrol Third Annual New Year's Eve Party 1923 to 1924. So New Year's 1923. And um, I might keep this because it is for Montana and um, I just think it might be a good keepsake and it's small and flat and paper and um, it has a party program Alice Lewis is the barnyard flapper. We're doing a barnyard flapper dance, maybe. I don't know. Um, wink. Wink and Jean Downing. <laughs> That's cool. Wink. Now you know. Um, I just think it's a it's a nice little piece of ephemera smokes. Cigars, cigarettes, mints, after dinner mints, fifteen cents. Huh. So yeah, I'll take a look at this and do some research on it, but it is, um, it's a little rough. I mean, there's a lot of crease marks, um, where maybe it was folded or, you know, it wasn't stored flat, but I still think that the graphics on it are a lot of fun and really neat. And I just love, um, this time frame this Art Deco time frame in the bag. Um, this is just a little plastic bag that it came in. It was marked six, so I paid three for that item. And then this other item, this is also marked six, but I paid three for it. This is um, a little flip book. And the one side is Oswald the Rabbit in the Big Blowout. And um, this was packed in Post's Grape Nut Flakes. So it's, um, it's a cereal prize or game or toy that came out of it. And so Oswald... He's in black and white, and then the other side is um, Andy Pandy. I called it um, Andy Pandy, but it's Andy Panda in the Lion Tamer. So he's got, um, you know, like a full color black and white panda with red shorts and yellow shoes, and then this yellow, golden, and brown lion, and he's trying to trying to do some lion taming against this lion. And um, this is book 11. This is one of a series of flip movies packed in posts, grape nut flakes. Flip the pages, see the movies. So, um, my, I had to pick this up because my mom and I were in Missoula, oh, about a year ago and we drove past Panda Express, and she goes, oh, there's Andy Pandy. We can eat there. 
for lunch or something, she was just kind of making a joke about the name. And I was like, Andy Pandy, what are you talking about? And so she was telling me about Andy Panda. So I just giggled when I saw this. I thought it was kind of funny. But you flip it and then you can see the, the movie. really cute. I need to quit saying cute. Um, but like I said, I paid $3 for that. And I might check with mom and see if um, she wants it. I doubt she will. So I'll price it out. Um, but I doubt it's going to be worth much. I might just keep it myself just for giggles. <laughs> Okay, and then this is another item that I got at the estate sale, and um, this is a silhouette on um, a mirrored back, and then it has like the reverse painted frame around it, and it's a lady sitting next to her spinning wheel looking out the window. And it's kind of neat because the window has a cottage in the background and that's in color. Then the woman in the spinning wheel is in this black and cream color silhouette. And then um, it's not really a placard at the bottom, but um, the advertising at the bottom is greetings from Daisy Dairy, there's no substitute for quality. Natural milk and cream. Mrs. J. Turk prop, maybe proper. Um, and then there is um, this little paper backer attachment that is precariously attached. It's been folded and so the paper is starting to wear out, but it's still fully attached for now. <laughs> Um, but it's the season's greetings calendar, and this is from 1940, um, and all the months are still on there, so it's never been used, and it's really neat. Um, so I might try to reinforce that back with something if I can. And it still has like the original tassel hanger on it. So I've done pretty good with these silhouettes and especially items that have um, advertising like grocery stores or petroleum. Um, the last silhouette that I sold that was like this. It did have a metal frame, and but it was also for, um, I think it was like a gas station grocery store combination. So it did have um, oil, gasoline advertising related to it. And I think that sold for 60, but I don't know how this one's gonna do if it's just um, Daisy Dairy. But this was originally marked 22 and I paid 11 for it. So, and it's in good condition. I don't really see any chips or cracks. There's a few little, um, I guess paint chips here on the side, just from wear and age, but it's in good condition. So I'll do some research on this, but, um, maybe 40 for this one it might go a little bit lower than the petroleum one i'm assuming so maybe maybe i'll start it at 40 and just go down from there okay and then the last item i think i think i got everything um this is this is back at the antique store um this is a bag of 
Smokey the Bear memorabilia, and I did pay $9.50 for this. And it's um, like a little booklet. And it, I don't know, it probably looks like it's from U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service. Oh, and look, they paid 50 cents for it. Um, I don't know, it looks like it's maybe from the 70s. I don't think it's any earlier than that, and I don't see the date on it. So I'll have to open this up and look at it just to get a date on it. But I do find a lot of Smokey the Bear memorabilia, and it usually sells really well for me. Um, just because of, you know, I live in Montana, and so Smokey the Bear items are quite common around here. Um, this pen, help Smokey prevent forest fires. This is probably a little bit more modern, maybe late 70s, early 80s. And then there are also two of these little um, red and yellow metal pins. I'm helping Smokey prevent forest fires. So these were probably given out um, by the forest service. I'm guessing. I can read this. And I can't. Um, I think these are a little bit older, maybe 50s or 60s, so I'll probably break these items apart and um, sell them separately, or maybe I'll do the larger pin with the booklet. I'll just price them out and um, see what I can, what I can price these at, but maybe 20 for the booklet and the larger pin and then i'll price out the two smaller um yellow metal pin backs um but yeah that's um that's all that i've got for today and hopefully i can get this video put together and get it loaded so that i can work on a new one <laughs> It's been over a week of me just trying to get this, these items videoed and posted. So um, thanks for joining me and hope you have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm going to start with some of the jewelry because it's, um, it's kind of scattered around and I think it'll just be easier to show first. So... Um, the first is the set of clip-on earrings, and I probably need to quit picking up clip-on earrings, because a lot of them just don't sell for me, but I really did like the look of these. They have, um, a red bead with some Aurora Borealis bead and then some other disc beads that are clear and then maybe like a, a gold, some type of plastic gold colored bead. And they, I thought they looked pretty neat because they, they have good layering to them and good height. There's a lot of different beads that are getting used. And they're on a backer card, and I'm not sure if it's the original backer card. Um, but I got these on 50% off day. I think this set was probably originally six, so I probably only paid three dollars for these. And I didn't see a name on them. Yeah, and they look um, pretty well worn, so I'll see if I can clean that up a bit. And um, 
maybe do some Google image search, but I probably won't be able to identify these unless somebody out there knows um, who the maker is, but they just look pretty neat, probably from the 60s, 50s or 60s, and usually depending on if I can identify the maker or not, I can typically get anywhere from 20 to 40, um, probably more on the lower end, like 20 to 30 for these, because I think I'm going to have a hard time identifying the maker on these, but I just thought they were unique, and I picked them up, put them down, took a look at them again, and just decided to go ahead and bring them home for three bucks. And then um, this is another set. I don't know why they're on here backwards, but um, they're a matching pair again. They're clip on. These are in a really pretty um, darker, cooler jewel tone. So you have like a plastic um, turquoise colored bead, some magenta stones, some blue. A royal blue and then a deeper navy blue and then you've got some green that kind of border on teal color and these I would say probably are from the, the 60s um, and they do have maybe a cartouche on them so I'll have to see if I can identify them when I first saw them, they, I thought they remind me something um, from Sarah Coventry, but I'll take a look at these and see if I can get these identified. And these actually, um, they look like they're fairly good construction, and I just think they're pretty and unique. So these I might be able to get a little bit higher price for these, maybe 30 to 40 and um, they were marked 10, but I did get them on 50% uh, off, so I paid $5 for these. And then um, this set I thought was really, really unique. Um, again, they're a clip-on, but they're plastic. They dangle. There's a plastic yellow bead, and then they dangle from a short chain, and then it looks like almost like a plastic lucite dice, but then um, there's like a daisy, like an orange flower that's painted on them. And the plastic bead is yellow, and the um, dangle dice is also yellow with the orange flower and then it has a green center so um i think i probably paid three dollars for these with the with the 50 percent off because i think their earrings are pretty much standard their typical price is six and then 50 percent off day they'd be three so um I picked these up and I put them down and then I thought about them and I, I thought, you know, I've never seen these before. So I think somebody would really get a kick out of them. And I had just sold um, a Lucite item previously. So I thought this was pretty cool. Um, so I picked them up and I thought I'll just see what happens, you know, for $3. Can't go wrong other than a lot of my... Um, clip-on earrings don't really sell quickly um, and I don't see a name on these but I'll do some research and see if I can figure out who's a maker of these and maybe $20 on these um, and then this ring this is just a cheapo brass ring And it has a butterfly and then it has um, two lighter green stones <clears throat> at the top and then two darker <clears throat> green stones at the bottom. And it's definitely made of brass and it's, you know, really cheaply made and 
it's probably going to be fairly hard to clean. So I don't know why I picked this up, but I did try it on and thought it looked kind of cute on the hand. So I don't know. I'll try to clean it up and see. It's probably not going to be worth a lot. Maybe. Maybe 15 if I'm lucky. But um, otherwise, I like it. And um, if it doesn't sell, maybe I'll just keep it for myself and have fun with it. And then I got this bag. And it actually has two items in it. And there's a necklace and a brooch. And the thing that caught my eye was the brooch. And it's marked celebrity. And I don't know much about... Um, jewelry and I'm planning to do a jewelry video so when I see something that's been identified I will try to pick it up um, but I think this brooch was six and I probably paid three for it um, it has red smaller red jewels on the outside and then um, pink the larger stones are pink and you know they're probably just crystal nothing nothing fine or fancy about it it's um has a cartouche right here and um i did take a look at it with a loop and it is marked celebrity so I'll do some research on this and see how well celebrity sells but um, usually for jeweled bedazzled brooches especially if they're a larger size I can get quite a bit for them usually they start at $30 and go up from there but I don't like I said, I don't know a lot about celebrities, so I'm going to have to research and do, you know, some homework on it. It is interesting because it is kind of layered, but at the same time, it feels um, really light. It doesn't have a good weight to it, so I'm not sure how good um, celebrity costume jewelry is, but it's pretty and it's a nice... Um, statement piece I think very eye catching and the combination of the red and the pink is always interesting to me I think it's um very feminine and you can kind of mix and match it in a lot of different outfits so I'll do research on that one and then this I kind of regret but at the same time I kind of um Now that I'm looking at it, I'm wondering if it matches the earrings. So this is also marked Celebrity. And it's a necklace, but it, it is broken, so I'm going to we have to repair it. But I'm wondering if that's a match to the earrings. I doubt it, but it's interesting. Um... So there's the celebrity mark on the back. So this is the pendant and um, the pendant's in fairly decent shape, but the, um, the chain um, is broken right here. So I'm gonna have to repair that and uh, my eyesight isn't great these days so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to 
repair that but it's a pretty chain it has um it's gold and then it has these little um orange beads that separate it out it's on a spring clasp so i'm thinking this is probably from the 70s even just based on the colors with the orange and the green and the gold but it also comes with a actual matching set of earrings. Let me see if I can get these separated. And they are marked as well. Um, but the the necklace I think was six. Well, it was twelve originally just for the necklace. And I didn't realize that it had the earrings in with it because um, it was kind of mixed up with the necklace. So these are kind of cool. The gold diamond shape at the top. And then they, the plastic beads hang off a chain on a loop. They are clip on and they are marked. So I'll do some research, but it'll take me a while to get the, to get the necklace repaired um, or fixed because I don't have great eyesight and I don't have the right tools for this. So I kind of regretted picking it up because um, I didn't realize it was broken um, in the bag. The chain was broken, so... Um, but it's cute. It's a cute set and worst case scenario, I may just list it, um, without trying to repair it and just note, you know, the chain is broken, will need to be repaired and then just sell the pendant with the broken chain and the earrings that are in good condition. These are cute. These are a lot of fun. Okay. I think that's it for the jewelry.